What's up YouTubers? It's Midwest Phil again and the reason I'm on the channel today is because I wanted to show you some modifications that I made to my Old Town Sportsman 120 PDL. So without further ado, I'm going to head on down to the garage because it's raining outside and it's going to be raining tomorrow and raining the next day. And uh, I'll turn the camera around and I'll talk you through these modifications and I'll put up a lot of pictures that'll help you see exactly how I did these things. So I'll see you downstairs. Okay, YouTubers, so here we are down in the garage. The first thing I want to show you is the Garmin unit that I installed on this kayak. That's a Garmin 73 SV. It's a touchscreen unit. Comes with uh, US Lakeview maps. And it has the 54 UHD transducer that I mounted underneath the kayak. And I'm going to show you how I did that in just a bit here. Uh, the other thing is, you'll notice that it's got a sun shield on top of it. I made that sun shield, it's made out of Kydex. And Kydex is what they use to put keel guards on, and I made a keel guard for this kayak. I'm going to put up some pictures for you. It's a bow keel guard. The kayak comes with a, a keel guard on the stern, which you guys, I'm sure you know about. It's a sacrificial keel guard. But let me show you about this little sun guard real quickly. And uh, first thing you'll notice is that it just simply slips on. You can pull it right off. And it has these little side pieces that I made for it. And they are gooped on. And I'll show you a picture of a brand new tube of goop. So you know what I'm talking about but it comes in uh, different types it comes in carpenter goop plumber's goop marine goop but it's actually all the same stuff you just grab any one of them and they all work exactly the same I'm not sure why they why they specifically call them carpenters or marine I think the marine has some extra UV properties in it though but anyways and then I I bent it just a little bit on top that way and it just simply slips on right where the nuts tighten down so you just pop it on pop it on one-handed and you can rotate it and you can rotate it back like that the unit itself go back around this way so you can get a better view of it The unit itself rotates on its mount. So usually I'll have it sitting right there. And then from the seat, I can reach down and I can use the touch screen. If I need to adjust any settings, turn it on or off, whatever I need to do with it. And also it slides backwards and forwards in that track. So it can go all the way back or it can come all the way forward. And the other thing is the way that the transducer cable comes up through the scupper hole. You guys know about that. But normally people will drill a hole back and go into the watertight compartment right there and then feed the wire up over there and come out behind. I didn't want to drill any holes in the kayak, so you know I could at a later date, but I wanted to try everything out. So I just simply coiled up the extra transducer wire Dropped it down in the scupper hole well, which isn't being used for anything. The water just drains down through there. Any water that comes in along here drains right out there. So I used that. Then I duct taped the wires to the kayak so they would all be nice and flush. And then I put some of the 
goop on there, let it cure for 24 hours, took the duct tape off, and those wires will stay there until I want to remove them. And if I do remove them, that goop will come away clean. It won't uh, do anything to the hull or anything to the wire. The other thing that you probably need to see on this is the way it's mounted. And underneath here, you'll see there's a piece of uh, quarter inch nylon plastic. And it's mounted right over to the edge of the track. And I've got a couple track bolts that I made from carriage bolts. Two of them right there, they're, they're quarter 20 carriage bolts that had the sides uh, filed off just a little bit so they would drop right down into the track and slide. And that way you can move this, you can move this thing around backwards and forwards if you want. But uh, the, I got it tightened down a little bit, but it slides. So the center of the rotational mount, which is under here and on top of that piece of nylon, from here to the center of the track is three inches. Which puts the unit a little bit outside of the kayak, but when you rotate it, your leg doesn't interfere with it because your leg is going to be way over here. And uh, I tried it out on the water and it works perfect that way. My leg didn't even come close to it. So I'm going to be good to go that way. And the other thing is the power supply. The power supply for this unit is not really anything that you haven't seen before because you've probably seen it seen these units on YouTube but it's it's called a it's called a tack life and they use them for starting emergency starting vehicles so that if you have a dead battery on a truck or a car you can it comes with a, a pair of cables that you can plug into it and it will start that truck or that car they even uh, are able to start some pretty pretty large diesel engines with them even though these units don't look that large the other thing is it has outputs on it for uh, cell phone and uh, it has a 10 amp outlet on it which is what I'm using for the Garmin unit and that's this outlet right here this is an input to charge it and it you know it actually charges pretty quickly too and so all you you do is you just over here is the charge plug or excuse me, the uh, power plug. And the power plug was adapted from uh, a cable modem. The power supply had blowed up on a cable modem. I got a new power supply for it and I took the old power supply cord and I used it for this. And it just plugs in right there, like that. So this will be sitting over here on the side. And I like to have it up so I can see the uh, percentage of power left on the LED units. Because when you turn this on, it gives you a percentage of power that's in it. Right now it's down to 99%. And I had this out on the water. I'm going to put up a bunch of pictures. And I, I've got a lot of uh, notes that I, that I left on the pictures. But I had this unit out on the water and used it for an hour with this power supply. And when I left the water, I had 99% left on the unit. So it's a pretty handy unit to have. Over there is the engine start uh, cover because those wires under there are hot. And uh, 
and it has a, uh, a light on it, and that's what you use this power button over here for is for the light. But what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to use it to run this Garmin unit. So it's pretty simple. It just drops in there. Then it just plugs in with the plug, and it's good to go. And the power cord comes up to the middle so you don't have another cord coming around the back. And it's pretty handy. If I have any problems with it in the future, I'll let you know. So far, I haven't had, I've I've run it on the simulator for two, three hours, and uh, the power never dropped below 85% on on the the unit. The simulator doesn't draw that much power. You're not going to pull a lot of power out of this Garmin. It usually only pulls uh, 0.6 amps to one amp. And unless you're in very very deep water or you're running the the backlight at 100%, you're not going to pull more than one amp off of that. So you don't need a very big power cord. But if you do, it comes with a, a 10 amp power cord that plugs into there, and then goes into a cigarette outlet that you can use to run like a an inverter or something like that off of there. So you could actually plug plug uh, that adapter into there, plug your cigarette inverter plug into there. Then plug your, your uh, laptop into the inverter and you could run a laptop in a, a vehicle. Or all, just off of that power supply right there. So, and also you can charge it from inside your truck too. It has uh, uh, a USB to the uh, power in connector. The other thing, let me see, what else we got going here? Oh, this is what I want to show you. What I'm going to show you next is something that uh, could uh, probably save your day out on the lake. And that is this power pole that's been dressed up with a bunch of colors. That's paracord that's on that, on that uh, camera pole that I've got there. And that flag, that's a pendant flag, I ordered off of Amazon. It shipped free, it was only seven bucks. Comes with a little nylon stick with a little rubber tip that goes on top of it and I just simply braided a bunch of power cord this is my extra power supply for the camera which doubles as a as a light and I braided that all the way down to the bottom it was pretty easy to do I didn't have nothing to do this winter anyway but what that does is if you stand back and you look at it it really, really brightens up the kayak. So that if you're out on the water, they're going to see you out there. And that's probably going to make sure that you, you get home safe every night. Boats won't be running over you, hopefully, anyway. There's a lot of crazy people on the water. The other thing I wanted to show you was these... Rugged shark boots. When you're putting your boat in the water, if you can step into the water, uh, you have an advantage because you can back your truck down the ramp, you can slide the kayak out, uh, you won't need to have your cart on it, and you can step into the water and not have to worry about getting your feet wet, and you can lay the, the stern of the kayak into the water and you can walk around and swing the front of the kayak over into the water and step in the water to move it around. And your your feet will, your socks will be nice and dry. Your feet will be nice and dry. And the other thing is they have very thick, heavy sole on them. So if there's any boards in that water with anything sticking out of them, like an L or something, uh, you're going to be protected for that. Because people throw stuff uh, in and around the ramps all the time even when i'm out there putting in kids will come up and start throwing things rocks and stuff in and around the ramps but you guys know all about that so there it pretty much is i'm going to uh put up a lot of photos like i said and show you how i did all this stuff and how i put it all together and we'll see what you think about it i even because I wanted to keep everything as bright as I could. I even, my little line that I used to attach to the, the docks or, and to hold on to right there. I even made that out of paracord because I wanted something bright. So, 
there you have it. I think I've got everything covered on there. I had it out March 11th. I'm probably going to have it out again maybe Thursday or Friday this week. And I didn't do any fishing because the water was just 51 degrees. It's really too cold for bass. You might be able to catch a few crappies right now. But I really like this kayak, and I'm really looking forward to having some good times in it. So anyway, YouTubers, that's about it for this. And I hope you like the pictures that I put up. And if you have any questions, you can just put them in the comment section, and I'll answer them. And uh, I'll see you on the flip-flop. Bye-bye.